uh, I, I feel for teachers too. Um, <laughs> And this story is another example why. Um, to me, elementary schools are like little prisons. <laughs> and I could go on about that analogy for a while, but basically, there, I was really nervous because my wife signed me up to speak to my daughter's elementary school class. And at the time, I was working as a prosecutor and assistant district attorney, so it's a heavy duty topic to talk about with little kids. You know, like Bert and Ernie knock over a liquor store. <laughs> Winnie the Pooh gets hooked on honey. I, I didn't really know what to, what to talk about. So I'm standing outside the classroom. I look into the classroom. It's Mrs. G. It has a long Italian name, but they all call Mrs. G. And there's a little couple on a table. Mrs. G, world's greatest teacher. And it's obvious the kids had made the cup. And she comes down the hallway to get me. And I go, Mrs. G, this is what we're going to do. We're going to stage a crime. We'll distract the kids. I'll take the cup. And then we can have a trial. And she looks at me like I'm completely insane. And she goes, that, that cup means a lot to me. I go, it'll be fine, it'll be fine, don't worry about it. So I come in, and like an idiot, I open with a joke. You know, I'm like, I get to these little kids, I'm like, you know, any of you want to be lawyers? I'm like, you know, there's no response. I'm like, oh, it must be the gifted class. <laughs> if I could describe Mrs. G's face, she just like roll, rolls her eyes at me. And then I'm like, I say, uh, does anybody know what a, a prosecutor is, a district attorney? There's one little kid with a buzz cut. It's like, you put people in jail. And I go, well, no, it's more than that. I like to think I fight for victims. And, and also, there's two sides to every story. If someone's accused of a crime, they're presumed innocent. Does anybody understand that? They didn't. I said, OK, well, let me explain. Has anybody ever here been somebody, your parent, your teacher, thought you did something that you didn't really do? The whole class raises their hand. <laughs> and my daughter's arm was going to come out of her socket. <laughs> And, and I said, well, that's what that is. And then I said, you've got to prove it by having witnesses. So I want all of you to go run over there, to look out the window there. Say somebody, police officer, says the bad guy got in a white car. I want you to go look at that, out that window and tell me how many white cars in the parking lot. When they did that, I ran, grabbed the teacher's cup, stuck it in an Acme bag, put it in the hallway, came back. I come in, and there's this one girl with a ponytail just glaring at me. <laughs> and so then I start talking some more. Then Mrs. G, I told her, this says, Where's my cup? And then Ponytail whispers to the girl next to her, who then says, you took it. <laughs> I said, OK, we're going to have a trial. And let me explain the trial. And so I explained the trial. And I had gave them all roles. A group of kids were going to be jurors. One kid was the court reporter. They had fun. They were just like playing a piano the whole time. <laughs> and I had buzz cut insisted on being the DA. <laughs> and no one wanted to be my attorney. There was nobody who wanted to be a defense counsel. <laughs> Mrs. G took this kid who was sitting in the back, and he was still counting how many white cars were in the parking lot. <laughs> and his name was Ralph, and he was really upset to be, and they sat him next to me. So he's sitting next to me. So Buzzcut calls Mrs. G as his first witness, and she establishes the theft. She's like, you know, yeah, my cup was there, and then it's gone. And then I explain, after she's finished testifying, OK, now it's what's called cross-examination. My attorney, Ralph, will get to ask him some questions. He's like, I don't know what to ask. And I go, why don't you ask her if, uh, you know, if she saw who took the cup? And he's like real depressed. And he goes, did you see who took the cup? And Mrs. G goes, no, I didn't. He goes, you didn't, did you? <laughs> I'm, like, I'm, like, I'm like, take it easy, Ralph. <laughs> they then call Ponytail. And she's a great witness, very annoying. And I get, inst I get instantly convicted. So I'm convicted if I'm a guilty. Then I tried to explain what sentencing was. And this part's the part that gets a little weird. I, I explained it, and, I, and I, I, the whole thing is I, I, I think they're going to say, I say, what should I be sentenced to? And I think they're going to come up with some cute little thing like there's a timeout chair the teacher has there that, oh, put him in the chair. You know, I thought that's what's going to happen. But I hadn't counted on my daughter. And my daughter <laughs> was a little bitter that she wasn't a juror, a lawyer, or any of the roles and thing. And, she, and she's here tonight. And, uh, with her friend Kristen, and my daughter, when I said, what should the sentence be, my daughter decided to yell out, off with his head. <laughs> <laughs> now, I don't, it upset, the class loved it, but it upset Mrs. G, because I don't think the death penalty was on her lesson plan. <laughs> and the thing about this part of the story is, I fact-checked this with my wife last night. I go, Peg, are we sure that our sweet little daughter yelled that out, and she goes, oh yeah, you came home ranting about it that night. And you gotta remember, Sammy went through her Alice in Wonderland stage, followed by her Harry Potter stage, 
her Game of Thrones stage, and now her Nordstrom stage. <laughs> And the other thing about it was, so when, when after she said that, I glared at Sammy because I'm furious at her. And she did what she's done for years. When I, she's in trouble, she just looked at the ceiling as if I didn't exist. Like, doo -doo 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 -doo. <laughs> so she's staring at the ceiling. Meanwhile, Ralph hadn't given up. Ralph raises his hand. Mrs. G, how can somebody get convicted, found guilty, if they don't have the cup? Mrs. G goes, very good point, Ralph. Dear, and he says, she says, the ponytail, could you go out in the hallway and get the cup? So she goes out in the hallway. She comes back in and goes, it's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. G almost knocked me over running out of the hallway. She goes flying out in the hallway. Then we hear her steps of the high heels going up one end of the hallway and then the other in the hallway. I'm sitting there, oh God, I'm sitting there. She comes back in, she's red faced and she's there, it's not there. Ralph starts to put his arms up like we've won the trial. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. G looks right at me, and I'm staring at the ceiling like doo -doo -doo. <laughs> And then finally I look down to look for a friendly face. I look at my daughter, and she moused me. I'm telling mom. <laughs> <laughs> There's an epilogue. The epilogue is they did not find the cup that day. Uh, they did find it the, the day after. The janitor had thought it was trash. We had to they had to fish it out of trash, but I, I was never invited back <laughs> to speak to Mrs. G's class. Thank you.